Yes, you can build a gaming PC in 2022 for $600, and here is your proof. So guys, as I stated in that intro clip, yes, you can build a gaming PC for $600 in 2022. And if you're new here, make sure you go back and check out the two previous content pieces I did on this build. The first of those videos being a dedicated parts hunt video where we take to all retail outlets possible to find parts to build up this PC. And the other being a live stream where we build this PC from the ground up. But also on the note of live streams, I wanted to make a quick mention that I'm going to try to be doing that at least once a month regarding building up the PCs that we parted together, but also a just a fun time for you guys to come hang out, interact with me, ask me tech questions, whatever. So I'd love to see you guys more there and stay tuned because more is on the way. All right, so let's get right into the build here. Let's talk about the parts and where I got them from and what I paid for them. But most importantly, in the end, we'll get to the benchmarks and see just how well this PC performs. So starting with the motherboard, we took to eBay on this part and picked up a Gigabyte DS3H B450 motherboard for only $55. If you're a regular to the channel, then you know I have used this motherboard time and time again, and it has always delivered for me. This board basically has all the options that you would need for getting a budget PC off the ground. The board allows for a wide range of different CPU SKUs. It has four DIMM slots available for future expansion and has some good cooling components positioned over the DRM. But most importantly, the motherboard is a B450 chipset, which allows us to do some mild overclocking and squeak out the most performance possible. By the way, guys, links to all the parts can be found in the description down below. So make sure you check that out if you want to model your own build after this one. So next up for CPU, which I also picked up off eBay for $130, what I managed to get here is the Ryzen 5 1600. This is the original generation of the Ryzen 5 1600 lineup, so a bit on the older side but still a very capable CPU for gaming at 1080p. That price was though a bit steep for what I wanted to pay but not completely out of reason. And if you guys caught the parts on video which you should then you would know that I actually was targeting a Ryzen 5 1600 AF which is a bit of a better CPU in terms of performance however those CPUs went so quick when I went to actually go buy them they were completely gone already so know if you're buying through eBay you got to act quick. So for memory we've got 16 gigs or 2 by 8 gig kit of G-Skill Ripjaw series running at 3600 megahertz CAS latency 18. This kit I actually picked up brand new off of eBay for $56. Originally I was going to go with some T-Force memory but when I went to go buy this this memory went on sale and I had to snag it up. And as I mentioned in the parts hunt video, RAM prices have never been better. So if you're looking to build a PC or even add some additional RAM to your existing system, it's never been a better time to buy. And moving on to storage again, another area in PC building that has never been a better time to buy, we have the Silicon Power 512 gigabyte drive. This I was able to purchase off of Amazon for a whopping only $43. That is utterly an insane price for 512 gigs of storage, not to mention running the latest NVMe architecture. Being super fast NVMe and 512 gigabytes gigabytes to boot, we will be able to have plenty of speed and plenty of room to load up Windows and several games on this drive. Moving on to graphics, I landed on a GTX 1063 gig I also got from eBay for a bit of a cringe price of $220. This is quite a steep price for what is considered to be a bit of a basic video card these days, but this is the time we unfortunately live in. But the great thing about this GPU, if you ignore the hiked up price, is it's got a 3 gig VRAM buffer, which means crypto miners are not very interested in them. And through experience, I've been able to see that the GTX 1063 gig models have a pretty reliable price for what we bought it for so they are available so it is still a decent option for a budget gaming system but keep in mind if searching for a GTX 1060 that you limit your search to three gig cards only because there is another variant that has a VRAM buffer of six gigabytes and that is an extremely sought after card for crypto miners and the prices on those cards are borderline insane so to power up everything in this rig we have an EVGA W3 500 watt series power supply that I picked up off EVGA B stock for an insane $25. Now normally I don't recommend a tier D power supply often but there are a few out there that I think still can be trusted this being one of them and it kind of makes just budget relevant sense. This is a power supply from EVGA so I have definitely used their power supplies plenty of times before not had any particular issues that I can recall ever though I think I'll just knock on some wood there just to make sure I don't karma jinx myself. But I'd have to say even though this being a super budget power supply this power supply packs a pretty nice aesthetic and the all black sleeve cables, which I think is a heck of a nice touch considering the little amount of money spent. And lastly, we've got everything buttoned up nicely inside this Q500L case from Cooler Master. So I wanna say big shout out to Cooler Master for providing this case, even though we didn't actually make the purchase, it still is within that $50 budget range that we 
picked out in the parts on video. So it was pretty crazy coincidence that we so happened to find the case in the parts on video and then I happened to have it on hand and everything just kind of fell in line that way. But some quick features on the case. It is definitely unique too and it offers a wide arrangement of configurations. It's also configured as a mini tower so it can support ITX systems but also a full size ATX board and power supply. Some very interesting usage of internal space indeed. However, I honestly think my favorite part of this case is the cable management design. Cooler Master really thought this one through and provided some great options to route cables all around the chassis, and most importantly, plenty of space behind the motherboard tray. Also, some other cool features of the case being some removable dust filters that you can put on the top and the front of the chassis, and where the PSU is mounted makes for some awesome use of some dead space. Though I do have one particular critique with this case, though it's not a big major one, is the acrylic side panel. I would like to see that as tempered glass because acrylic scratches over time and you're going to have to be very careful maintaining that nice non-scratched look. So Cooler Master, maybe uh, add uh, five more bucks to the cost of this case and put a tempered glass side panel on. And one last thing to make this build pop just a little bit and wasn't actually included in the parts hunt video. This is just something that Cooler Master provided over to me, but we got that set up in the back of the case as exhaust. Cooler Master sent this fan on over to me and I thought what better way to make this build pop a little bit since it really didn't have anything going for it other than just the basic core components. Keep in mind the fan was not included in the original $600 budget. This is just something extra I added in since I had it on hand and Cooler Master sent it on over, but I got a link for it down below if you guys are interested in these fans. I think they look pretty sweet. So that is it for the summary of this build, totaling up to $600 for all the parts that you see in front of you. I think it's going to make for a pretty awesome little 1080p gamer. So what more than to prove my word there and show you the benchmarks. Let's go. All right, guys, so in summary, as you can probably see, it's a new day. I've got a haircut and a new shirt on. Sorry, I'd love to be able to produce these types of videos in just one day, but that, that simply isn't possible. But let's get into the PC, right? There's a few things to discuss. Aside from it being an awesome gamer, as you can see, we're able to pull off over 100 frames in most every title that we benchmarked. But there's a couple things that I wanted to mention here so that way you guys have full awareness. First thing being the RAM. Actually, the RAM, we did go out and purchase a 3600 megahertz kit and 
everything was all peachy and, and hunky dory and we got a post as you know if you saw the stream however that was just posting on the default ram speed so when i went to go apply my xmp boom no more posts and for a second it had me thrown off but then i got to realize you know what the 1600 first gen series ryzen is a bit on the older side and it may not even support the memory speed and through some research i found out that to be the case the most about expected maximum speed that you can get out of these ryzen 5 chips and it is the chip that is the limiting factor but you can get about 3200 megahertz out of it so that was okay luckily i was able to just go into the bios pump in a 3200 megahertz clock but here's the benefit I was actually able to tighten up the cast latencies as well. So bring it from an 18 cast latency down to a 16. So take it at that if you guys want to follow that same thing that I did. The RAM still works perfectly fine. However, to a beginner, it might be a bit alarming and you may not want to mess with that in the BIOS. So this is just a PSA for that particular issue that I ran into. Get yourself a 3200 megahertz kit if you don't want to have to do what I did. Secondly, we did overclock the machine, so it is pumping in a little bit more heat than normal. And if you guys were paying attention in the benchmarks, it started to get a little toasty in some areas. Now, granted, I am introducing more unnecessary heat through the overclock, but I wanted to get the most price to performance possible here. So I pumped in a static 3.7 gigahertz overclock, which is really only about 100 megahertz over the boost clock, but that is a all core overclock on all the time. So it definitely makes a performance difference. However, like I said, you're introducing more heat. But don't be alarmed about that if you are following this exact build because it still operated just fine over multiple hours of game. You never saw any throttling and obviously no thermal shutdown. So if you're looking for a little bit lower temperatures, know that you might wanna throw on an aftermarket cooler just for keepsake. And honestly, that'll probably allow you to bump the overclock even more. I know these chips can do around 3.8, 3.9. Aside from all that guys, that concludes the full series being the part sign, being the stream, and now the full overview and benchmark of the system. I had tons of fun with this PC and I'm glad to see it being quite the gamer. And when it comes to flipping this PC, I know that's gonna be some really happy person to receive it. But before you guys take off, make sure on your way out, you give the video a like if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to the channel if you aren't already. Check out the videos that we did previously on this machine. Thanks for tuning in to this one though. I appreciate your time and I'll catch you guys in the next one.